Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Um, my name is Daryl Moore. I'm the assistant to the pastor here at First Central Baptist Church, where Reverend Demetrius S. Carolina Sr. is the pastor. And I would like to welcome you to, um, to fellowship and worship with us and study with us on today. Uh, today, I would just like to uh, get a uh, speak to you from a, a piece of scripture uh, found in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 25. It reads this way. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their crosses daily, and follow me. For whosoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whosoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self. That is the New International Version. Uh, for the next couple of minutes, we'll think of a thought, uh, focus on the thought, lose yourself. A, a few months ago, on a beautiful summer day, I hopped in a car to enjoy some time in the park with my family. When we arrived at our destination, I realized that I didn't have my phone or my keys with me. I looked all over the car, on the ground near the car where the car was parked. I walked on the sidewalk in between where we parked the car and where we were in the park, and I could not find the keys. My anxiety level was escalating uh, what was on what was already a stressful day and my mother and my wife began helping me look for my keys. Uh, we decided to go back to the parking lot of my apartment only to find my keys lying on the floor in the space where my car was typically parked. Anyone who knows me knows that I have a habit of losing items sometimes. That is why I use the Find My app on my iPhone and I've invested in a Bluetooth location device. This way, I can at least always control uh, and make sure that I don't lose my keys. Truthfully, for my sanity, I can't afford to lose anything else in 2020. 2020 has dealt many of us a healthy portion of loss, and I'm not just talking about keys. It feels as if loss and pain has plagued many of us all through 2020. Some have lost jobs, and some have lost points on their credit score because they have the inability to pay their bills because of the reduced income. Some have lost the ability to see the results of hard work. There are some that had planned to walk across the stage at graduation or to go to the prom or and that weren't able to go. I understand that these losses hurt. Some have lost loved ones, maybe your mother, your father, your nana, your big ma, your auntie, your best friend have passed. And, and because of the restrictions connected to COVID-19, you even lost out on the ability to fully mourn them because you couldn't travel to or attend a local funeral. Some have lost the ability to step into a dream. I know somebody who had prepared for not one, but two degrees in the field of hospitality, only to have the uh, vacation industry shut down, shook up, and rocked because of the coronavirus. Some have lost faith in our polit political system. Losing just seems to be very unfair. Some people have just opened up businesses only to be forced to close them because of the loss of clientele. Perhaps you've lost your dream and, and, and now you have to stay home to, to monitor the kids as they work, uh, uh, learn remotely. Some have lost relationships with family members or with friends or with their spouses. Like leaves falling off of trees in autumn, 2020 has seemed to be a season of extended loss for some of us. 
even the 45th of president of the United States has lost. Despite what he says, it, he has lost the election. In some sense, we have all lost. Some uh, are watching me right now on YouTube or, or Facebook because we have lost our ability to gather in person inside of the house of worship. We feel the shock of the hashtag names of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and, and many others. There just seems to be so much loss in 2020. Some have even lost their trust and confidence in God. The losses of 2020 that have come in varied ways from multiple people. Yes, it's been a year filled with loss of life, loss of quality of life, loss of health and loss of finances. I would suggest that most people don't like losing. If you're like me, like I was with my keys and how I am with my phone, you, you would create a fail safe system to make sure that you could control the situations around you to make sure that you didn't lose that which matters to you, that which you care about. But I want to suggest that there is a particular kind of losing that is not only, that is not negative, but it is also beneficial. Well, you say, Reverend Moore, that, that doesn't even make sense. I, I know it sounds a little paradoxical, but, but if you just give me a few seconds, I'll try to explain what I'm saying. I want to suggest that the particular type of losing is not only beneficial, but necessary for the maturity of the individual believer, for the development of the community of believers, and for the effectiveness of the gospel in society. You want to know what is this losing that I'm talking about? I'm glad you asked. I'm talking about losing yourself in Jesus. What does losing yourself in Jesus look like? Losing yourself in Jesus, perhaps you want to say for Jesus, does not mean becoming like everyone else. It is not losing your personality, your charisma, or your moxie. It is not losing your intellect, your sense of humor, or your swag. It is not losing your athletic prowess or your artistic ability. It is not becoming someone who you are not. My friends, my brothers and my sisters, God is very aware of who you are. As a matter of fact, according to Psalm 139, uh, verse 14, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're crafted by God to be who you are. Losing yourself to Jesus simply means that Jesus will take that which he finds good in you and expand it and make it better. And those things that are in your personality that do not honor him, he will exchange uh, for, for uh, things that will make you honor him. What am I saying? I'm saying that if you lose yourself to Jesus, you can exchange your insecurity for God's confidence. I'm saying that, that if you lose yourself in Jesus, you can exchange depression for joy. If you lose yourself in Jesus, you can exchange anxiety for a peace that goes beyond your understanding. Of course, there are some adjustments that will be made when you lose yourself. But in the end, you will still be you. You'll be the person that God created you to be, that God called you to be. You will be you. You will be you. You will find you by losing yourself in Christ. Well, you want to know, or you should want to know, how does this work? Let's look at the text. I read three short verses. In this particular passage, we find Jesus talking to his 12 apostles and some other disciples. And he says that they are to deny themselves. Whoever wants to be my disciple, the King James says, 
whoever wants to come after me should deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Three beginner steps, initial steps, to losing yourself. What does it mean to deny yourself? This, this, this idea of denying yourselves is, is much more than a radical, uh, uh, much more radical than the idea of denying or, or stopping or ceasing to do certain things. There, there is this belief in, in, in Christianity and the church that, that all you have to do is, is, is stop the way that you talk and dress a certain way and come to the church at a certain time, and if you do that, then you will be in right relationship with God and with each other. That is not what Jesus means when he says, deny yourself. This denial uh, of oneself that Jesus is talking about is a rejection of life based uh, uh, solely on self-interest and self-fulfillment. Instead, a disciple is to be one who seeks to fulfill the will and teachings of Jesus. What does that mean? That means that there are going to be some times when you have a desire. There are going to be some times when there is something that you want to do. And because of the greater good of society, for the greater good of the cross, you are not going to do it. Maybe I should give you an example. The scripture tells a story following Jesus' baptism where he is in the wilderness fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights. While he's in the wilderness fasting, the adversary comes and he points to some stones, to some rocks on the ground, and he knows that Jesus is hungry. Jesus has a physical desire to feed himself, and he says, turn those rocks into bread. Now, I don't know about you, but, it, but if it was me, I, I wouldn't not only turn the rocks into bread, but I, I would have turned the rocks into some uh, red snapper with some cheese grits that had a Chardonnay pan sauce and, 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 and have some hot tea along the side with it, but Jesus didn't do that. Jesus denied himself despite the need and the desire that he had. He denied himself because he knew that if he ate at that moment, if he, if he fell to the temptation of the adversary at that moment, then he would have um, messed up his mission and his purpose. We need to just have enough courage to lean on God and at points where we um, are challenged by those things that tempt us so that we make sure that we don't compromise our purpose. We are all tempted daily. We're tempted by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and by the pride of life. I tell you, I know that it's hard because like many of you, I have failed even since being in relationship with God. But still, God gives us second, third, fourth and fifth chances to deny ourselves so that we can continue to walk with him and live as mature disciples in Christ. Following that, Jesus says that we should take up the cross. What does it mean to take up the cross? Well, you know that in the first century, the cross was an instrument of violent and painful execution. To take the cross was to carry the horizontal wooden beam along your shoulders down the road of execution, usually in the presence of onlookers who would jeer and make fun of you. Uh, Jesus describes what, what is all true for all disciples, that, that there are going to be moments where because we are denying ourselves, because we are uh, making sure that we are, are trying to submit to God's will and God's way, that the people around us are going to jeer us. They're going to make fun of us. They're going to say, I, I, I know that you're about forgiveness, but if it was me, 
I wouldn't do it that way. They're going to say, I, I know that you're about love, but, but if it wasn't, if, if I was you, I, I would do it this way. They, 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 they would tell you that how to behave, and they want you to behave the way that people in, in average society or of the world behave. But the thing is, we're called to be a peculiar people. We're called to be holy, and holy means that we are to be different. So that means that if somebody hurts us, then we should have the courage to forgive them. That means that even if we have the opportunity to exact revenge on somebody, that we don't. That means if we can ignore somebody because we have the ability to not help them because we don't need their help when they're down on their luck, that we don't look down on them because they're down on their luck, but that we exercise love to give a piece of what we have so that somebody on the margins of society can feel as if they're loved and they have purpose. In, in addition to that, when he says, to take up your cross, the, the, the image of, of carrying the cross beam on your shoulders is an image of one that has a great heavy load, a, a great burden bearer. We as the community of Christ, as a community of believers, as the church in a fallen world, we are here and we are needed to carry the burden of believers. Uh, we are here to carry the burdens, excuse me, of society. And so when we see that there is government that doesn't care that people are starving in the streets, that there, that there is a system that is set up that, 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 uh, is, that favors people because of the way that they look or because of their orientation or because of their gender or because of the amount of money that they make, that the church needs to stand up and fight for justice and say this isn't the way of the Christ. We should deny ourselves, and we should take up our cross. The third thing, and I'll be out of your way, Jesus says, follow me. This is interesting because the other two verbs, deny and take up, is one word in the Greek, are simple past tense called the aorist in the Greek. But but this particular verb in the Greek that is translated as follow is the present imperative tense. What does that mean? That means that, that these words that are spoken are not a suggestion by Jesus, but the imperative is used as a command, it's used as an exhortation, uh, it doesn't leave room for discussion. Even if he's being polite when he's speaking, he's letting you know that there is an extreme importance to this. And that it's present means that it's continuous. We are to continuously try to improve and to strive to follow Jesus. You may say, well, what does it mean to follow Jesus? Well, I think that maybe not you, maybe not the people here at First Central, but somebody at somebody's Baptist church somewhere is really good at coming to church and really good at singing songs and really good at raising their hands during worship, but not so good at following Jesus. Ask yourself, what do I do to follow Jesus? If you've asked yourself that question, as I hope you did, ask yourself also, what are some of the things that Jesus has done? Well, we see Jesus at one time feed a large amount of people with a little bit of food. Have you shared the little bit that you have or out of the abundance that you have, 
with somebody who doesn't have anything. We see Jesus at one time have a conversation with the woman at the well who, uh, because he was Jewish and she was a Samaritan, uh, culturally, he could have treated her poorly because that was expected by his society. When was the last time that you had a conversation with somebody who looked different than you, who talked different than you, who thought different from you, or do you support those who want to ostracize the other? I'm talking about following Jesus. Jesus found or, or, or pardoned a woman who was caught in an adulterous act. He bent down on the ground. He told her accusers that they need to think about the sin that was in their life and then gave her some love and told her to live her life without committing the mistake again. Jesus made reform in the church when, when they were selling the sacrifices at an elevated price, the, the turtle doves, he, he flipped over the tables. When's the last time that, that you looked at, at houses of worship all over the world and really said, uh, are they trying to meet the needs of the community or are they just trying to keep the status quo? Jesus, he built a team of men around him. We call them the 12 apostles, but over and over he had to ask them, where is your faith? Where is your faith when they didn't understand? Despite their failings, Jesus believed in them and helped them to become better. Do you give up on people when they fail? Or are you willing to sit and take your time to help them become better believers. Jesus' closest, or one of his closest friends, Peter, ran away when Jesus needed him the most. But after he rose from the dead, Jesus sat down and had a conversation with Peter. He, he said, Peter, I, I know that you failed me and you, you want to quit the group of the disciples, but do you love me. Three times he asked him, and he said, feed my sheep three times. Are you willing to press through the hurt of those people who you have so much history with in order to show people that through Jesus, that with Jesus, people can overcome even the hardest and most traumatic experiences in their life. How do we follow Jesus? We look at what Jesus did. And any time that we have an opportunity to do something or a decision make, to make, although it's cliche, we ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? Simply by denying ourselves, by taking up our cross, by following Jesus, we will lose ourselves. And as we lose ourselves, we will become more mature individually and collectively. And the gospel will have an impact on the world that people were not expecting, but they so very much need. That's all I have to say today. God bless you and peace. Hey, again, I'd just like to thank you for uh, joining us for this particular study. I, I would like to pray for you um, because I believe that there is power in prayer. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to let you know uh, that you can find videos like this every Wednesday um, on this same YouTube channel and also uh, videos of sermons from our pastor and the ministry circle, which are the ministers of this church, uh, on Sunday morning, and they go live at 10 a.m. If you, uh, after engaging or fellowshipping with us virtually, you have some more questions about God, or you would like to give your life to Christ, 
um, and perhaps even connect with our fellowship. Uh, feel free to confess that Jesus is God if you believe it in your heart and based on that you're saved. And if you would like to connect with our fellowship, just give us a call at 718-273, yes, 9274 and leave a message on the machine and one of the leaders of the church will get back to you. Uh, that being said, let us look to the Lord. Father God, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, we ask, O oh Lord, that right now you just uh, continue to uh, move with power in the lives of your people. And God, we ask that you just give the peace that surpasses all understanding, O oh God. Give people the courage to continue to move on. And God, I ask that you just uh, touch in a positive way uh, anybody that has been affected uh, negatively by coronavirus or anything else this year, um, any physical ailments, uh, any emotional ailments, any mental health issues, God, I ask that you just move and remove them in a miraculous way. Lord, right now, I ask that you just touch those people who are on the opposite uh, edge of the screen, on, the, on the, the, the opposite sound of my voice. Give us the ability to continue hoping. And if there is somebody, O oh Lord, who is brokenhearted, who is struggling and who's questioning, allow them to be transparent and not hide from you. Allow them to lament the way that those writers of the psalm lament. Allow them to lament the way that Jeremiah lamented, O oh Lord. Allow us to give you all of our pain so that you can exchange it with all of your power and all of your joy. This is my prayer in the matchless name of Jesus. And let the people of God who love God say, Amen, Amen and amen.